Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the King of Armor Destruction, the Armor Wizard, Zap Zap. We have a body armor demo today from Hesco. In full transparency, STAC sent these plates over for me to destroy with no strings attached approximately two years ago, and they got buried in the bottom of the pile, and I kept forgetting about them, and I think the guy who worked at STAC moved on, so nobody was bugging me about them, but we need to get these done. Let's take a closer look at these HESCO plates that we have to destroy today. These HESCO 3611C behemoths are a sappy size extra large, so they're like 11 by 14 or somewhere close to that. Very, very large. Typically, I always demo our 10 by 12 plates. This guy is 26.3 millimeters thick or 1.035 inches. They weigh five pounds, 7.6 ounces. Very, very light for an extra large plate. Some of our other level three offerings in a 10 by 12 aren't near that. These plates are multi-curve. You can see all those nice sexy curves there. We have one right here as well as having one right here. And then typically, depending on the type of cut, this is a savvy cut. We also have some additional curvatures at the end here, and that will usually fit your body a lot better than a single curve or a flat plate. If this is the first time you're viewing my YouTube channel, we do all of our body armor demos completely different than everyone else on YouTube or after worst case scenario. Since this is rifle armor, we shoot at 45 feet. We also shoot at zero degrees because that is maximum worst case scenario for that body armor. Any oblique angles only add to the amount of material that that bullet has to penetrate through. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina, number one clay from Chavant, and that acts as our compressible media to put the body armor up against, and it prevents the body armor panel from flying about and not having maximum energy transfer to it. It is the same clay that the NIJ uses, but they heat it up and they drop a ball on it to certify that dimple. It's like 80 degrees outside in the back of my woods today, so we can't keep that temperature at a constant. So we're looking at a representation of what back face could be. If we see something like 80 millimeters of my clay from a 5.56 threat in the real world, that would be failing. We use a chronograph whenever possible, a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX, as well as a newly acquired Garmin Zero C1 from Cabela's Bass Pro. A big thank you to them. In full transparency, I have an affiliate link in my campsite below. So if you're looking to make up a purchase from Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's, I have that there to say a thank you to the channel. Since this is rifle armor per the NIJ, we've gone ahead and dropped each plate on its face two times as a preconditioning test. After we've dropped our plate, we mark each one with a DT indicating we've done the drop test. If we do it more than two times, we indicate that number on the side. We also do a torque test. That's where we take the opposing sides of each plate and flex them to listen for any cracks. Both of these plates, I could hear some cracking for that, so we marked that with a C versus a TQ if it didn't have any cracks. And finally, we put a spreadsheet here at the beginning and the end, and we kind of foreshadow all the threats we're going to shoot at it. We mark our velocities and our penetrations, and we do a teardown at the end. HESCO is known for producing complete edge-to-edge ceramic strike faces, so it's good that when we tear that down, we confirm that. Some manufacturers will give you a lighter plate because they are reducing the amount of strike face that is on the front of that plate. I want to remind everyone that I'm not an NIJ lab. I'm just a guy out here in the woods having some fun with my family. So if you see a threat stopped or penetrate over here, you should always defer to the manufacturer to produce accredited and recent lab results showing those threats have been stopped. And on the flip side, if you see me stop some kind of insane threat, you should send it off to a lab and have that added as a special rifle threat to your panel. Our plate is ready to go. Let's see what the limits of this are. We're gonna start right out with our level three or RF one and two threat, which is our M80 ball. It's 149, 150 grain full metal jacket. 2780 feet per second is the spec. Now I forgot the 22 inch, so we've got a 24 inch. So we're gonna see upwards of 200 feet per second over spec, this is our Winchester Lake City Surplus. Now what's different about this is that the jacket is bimetal, meaning that there's usually a ferrous or you know steel part to it that attracts a magnet. It could be argued that these jackets are harder than a copper jacket. 2970, Woo! dab smack in the middle. 2936 on the, above my green strap on the right hand side. 2964, woo! We'll have to zoom out a little bit. Shots number one, two, and then three. Helper hand, place those buttons in the comments below. No pass-throughs, folks. Now, our dimple up here is quite excessive and we've actually delaminated the plate a little bit, so we'll have to be careful with any follow-up shots on there. But our center of mass shot, no big deal at all. Even that one over here, that one's probably the worst for wear. So far, back face this shot over here. 
extended right around 24 millimeters. This guy here is hard to measure, but he's right around probably 63 millimeters. And then this shot here in the center, right around eight millimeters. Now I don't build up the clay. Again, these are just a representation of what back face could be. Always defer to the manufacturer. It looks like we're using some foam on the back of here to help control some of that blunt force trauma. So that could explain it and why this plate is thinner or lighter than average. Let's see how this plate handles our 5.56 threats. We've got our 22 inch TC compass. So this is pretty much maximum rear wheel velocity. Got the turbo T3 up front. We've got three flavors of 5.56. We've got our M193, 55 grain full metal jacket known for pop and steel. Then we've got M855 lead core steel tip, which is hardened right around 50 RHC. Then we've got M855A1, the EPR round copper core, large hardened arrowhead steel tip right around 60 RHC. We've got 15 rounds here. I think we should be able to put this all on this plate. It's going to take us a minute, but I think we can do it. 3362. That was an edge shot if I ever did see 13437. Well, I pulled that one a little bit, folks. Now for Mr. Spicy Boy M855A1. If you're looking at picking any of this up, Warpig Armory has some. They have a discount code of Buffman to save you, I think, 5%. Dozer Munitions has some as well all the time. 3191. Ooh. Nice, let's go see what we did to that plate. We've got all of our ducks in a row and I would consider most of these fair hits. Our M193, number one, two, three, four, and then five, that one's, you know, an inch from the edge in the NIJ's eyes, that's not a fair hit. M855, number one, two, three, and then four. I do believe it was one, two, three, four. Then M855A1, number one, two, three, four, and five. Place those bets in the comments below. I'm not liking how some of that clay is sticking out. R oh, Raggy. Uh, looks like we have some penetrations on this plate. Give me a second to peel the back off and we will confirm, but it looks like <laughs> uh, we might've pushed the limits on this guy a little bit. Confirmed our penetrations were that shot of M193 there, that shot right there, M855 and then all five rounds of M855A1. Looks like we're using a thinner strike face, so we're gonna have to be careful on what kind of threats we're gonna shoot at this plate going on for number two. Plate number two is ready to go. We're gonna have to be very careful with this based on our penetrations of our 5.56 five, threats. But since this is somewhat relevant, here is our 545 by 39. We've got an SSG82. This has a 24 inch barrel. So, you know, again, maximum real world velocity. We've got our seven N6 this is a 52 grain steel core. It's a RHB, so mild steel core. And we've got 7N6M for modernized. This has the same core, but it's actually hardened steel. Pretty much very good at penetrating certain types of body armor. Thirty ninety five. good shooting. Thirty fifteen. Let's revisit our M855A1. We stepped down in barrel length to a 10 and a half inch. This is as short as I brought with me today.
You all have seen me use this caliber in some of our recent armor testings. And depending on the construction of the plate, these bullets can actually penetrate, mainly because they're so freaking long and they're also subsonic, so they're not being degraded as fast as the supersonic form. At least that's my theory anyways. We've got our 8.6 black. We've got three flavors here. We've got a solid brass spun 250 grain, a solid copper spun 285 grain and then a 260 grain tungsten core lead core guy or sorry tungsten core with a lead surround on it this is the swiss pap Good shooting Deacon, if anything, like and subscribe for Deacon making some nice hits on his plate. 7N6, number one and number two, then our 7N6M one was right there, and then that one he got a little close to the edge, but this does have edge to edge strike face. Then our A1 from our 10 and a half inch, number one, two, and then three. Our tungsten 8.6 black was right there, then our solid copper spun was right there, and right there. They're actually hard to see because they're not doing anything to this. Uh, outside cover and then our brass was right there and right there help her hand place those bets come on, Ru oh raggy we have penetrations from the 7 and 6 m as well as the m855 a1 and we'll double check to see but it looks like we had a penetration even from that solid brass spun round right there i think it's because the strike face is too thin I think we'll call the test after this round, but we're going to bring out our 5.7 by 28 millimeter. I don't think that this stands a chance against this plate, but it does have a thin strike face. This is our 31 grain FMJ armor piercing SS190, has an aluminum core, has a conical steel penetrating tip inside the sem same as M855. Deacon will be taking some shots from our 10.4 inch FN90 from FN Specialties. All right, our final shots of SS190. Number one was right there. Number two was right there. Number three was right there. And then number four was right there. That one's a little low and close to the edge. So if we had a penetration, I'm not gonna consider that a fair hit, but good shooting Deacon. That does not have a magnified optic on it. It's got the holo sun on there. Place those bets in the comments below. Ho! No pass-throughs, folks. I didn't think there would be with SS190. It doesn't have the velocity or necessary bullet construction to get through this, but with the penetrations that we were getting off this, I was just wanting to double check. Paging Dr. Matt to surgery. Paging Dr. Matt to surgery. Now, for a fan favorite, the teardown. That's where we get to look at the guts of our plates, and we're going to confirm as many penetrations as possible. We did test the D220 on the same day, and that plate did rather well, so... I was having high hopes for this plate and I didn't realize that this was more so not covering all these extra threats. So here is our backer, the polyurea truck bed coating. Here is our blunt force trauma foam. I measured that right around 340 thousandths thick. You can see how thick that guy is there though. There. It does work at times for controlling blunt force trauma, but I'd rather have this and have more polyethylene. Here is our backer. We're using Honeywell Spectra Shield. It does appear pressed right around 424 thousandths thick. You can see our 8.6 black copper loads getting stuck there. But for whatever reason, that guy was able to penetrate. Confirmed our penetrations were the M855A1s from the 10.5 inch, as well as our tungsten AP7N6M and that brass 8.6 down there that 1545 down here actually penetrated 
Here is our strike face. I do have to print a retraction. Deacon's SS190 shot was right there. That's pretty close to that M855A1, but it was stopped. Now, I was expecting all of our HESCO plates to have laminated strike faces, as you can see right here. This does not have any lamination layer. I measured that right around 150 thousandths thick. This could be why it cracked when I dropped it because there is no laminating layer on there. There is a little bit on the back because it's bonded to our Honeywell Spectra Shield. But this is pretty much what I would consider a level three plate. It would be borderline three plus for anything above and beyond say RF one and two with M855 and M193. Which stop our 762 by 39, no problem. Here is the foam on the other one. Confirmed were the penetrations that we had of the A1, M193, and the M855. This plate was fairly easy to get apart. Again, the harder it is for me to get plates apart, the longer they tend to last and better they tend to do against follow-up shots. But there you have it. I think if they would laminate this strike face and make it a little thicker, it would do better against our 556 threats, but that always comes at a cost. And you know, the NIJ standards are minimums and some companies will build to those with a little bit of safety margin and they meet the spec and without listing any SRT threats, that's all they have to do. This is an NIJ certified model. We did have the Starburst logo there. Well, folks, there you have it. Our HESCO 3611C did fairly well against our 308 threats and our 556 until we were at that upper echelon of our velocity threshold for our 22 inch. It would seem that this plate is designed to meet the level three slash three plus RF one and two threats with just a little bit of leeway in there with our 22 inch, we're able to get, you know, almost 34 to 3,500 feet per second from M193. We're able to get close to 3,200 feet per second with M855, as well as going over 3,200 feet per second with the M855A1. Because that strike face was so thin, we were actually able to get some penetrations from some of our more obscure, less common niche rounds like our 8.6 black tungsten, as well as our 7N6M from our 24 inch barrel. If I had to offer any constructive criticism, as always, we should laminate that strike face to prevent any cracking from being dropped. We should have the amount of back face foam on that and replace that with more of a polyethylene. We're using brand name polyethylene. It is pressed and it seemed to do a fairly good job. It didn't delaminate as bad as we've seen on some other plates. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them. A lot of my newer armor videos, I have a little counter up here for a total value of armor destroyed. And that number just keeps going up and up. So any support that I can get either from retailers or manufacturers is greatly appreciated. Number one, I'd like to thank my family. Deacon was out here all day helping me shoot. He was riding his dirt bike and side by side around. So it's any time that I can spend with them is greatly appreciated. Number two are my Patreon, Subscribestar, and YouTube channel members. I have a campsite in the description below with various different discount codes that earn me a affiliate commission that what I do with that is I put it right back in the channel. As I mentioned, you know, if you want to pick up any M855, War Pig Armory has some and that Buffman code I think earns me $5 or something per sale. And what I do with that is I buy more M855A1 from War Pig so that I can do more of this testing. Number three is STAC, again in full transparency, sent me that armor to destroy with no strings attached. Number four is HESCO. I have worked with them in the past and continue to do so so we can test some of their new models. And of course, number five is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Thank <music> you.